When we think about the energy system of the tree, the physiological uh, concept of actions and expected responses is a big manner and method in which we identify if, some, if something is out of cue, okay? Now, obviously, we recognize spring. We get juniper tip blight. We get needle casts on, on pines. We have rhizosphera left over from the fall or Swiss needle casts on our dug fir, spruce, etc. Like, when spring comes around, we start to see different things happening. Trees that we've repotted might shed weaker branches, uh, might be adapting to that new containerized environment and, and getting rid of some of the pieces that were on the cusp or on the fringe. We may see some old needle drop, especially for dealing with broadleafed evergreen trees. You know, these kinds of things are normal, okay? But when we think about the general scheme of physiology, an established root system, a tree that has been in a container for at least a year, last spring repotted, now we're to the first sort of one year mark of its time in that containerized environment, or any tree that is established in a bonsai container. And we see leaf drop happening in the spring, we have to recognize that physiologically, this is not normal. This is not normal. It's not normal, okay? Because when we physiolog physiologically think about things, winter color leaving this piece, not leaving, but more than that, the chlorophyll, the iron, the magnesium, the nitrogen, that was stored in the vacuole because it is, it is susceptible to cold desiccation and, and decay, right? Moving back into the pigmentation, which captures the sun's energy, breaks the molecular bonds of water and carbon dioxide and reforms it as glucose. So we see this green color returning to the tree. But what we also see is we see pieces that are, that are brown or we see green pieces as we start to touch the tree. We're looking at sort of the we're looking at the, the bench that this tree is sitting on. And notice that we have green pieces. Jesus, can you come down here to the turntable, right? And I'm just kind of touching this. Notice that we have green pieces falling off of the tree, right? And, and I'm just touching. I'm not pulling them off. You see kind of that, all of that, there's some dead in there. This is a tree that's recovering to be sure, right? But when we see active green pieces falling off of our tree, notice we have color here. We have color, we have photosynthesis taking place. This is not a piece that should be falling off, okay? The loss of foliage right now, not a normal thing. And we say, well, then what is it, okay? Physiologically, and let me just show you this juniper, a juniper that's recovering, and you notice that there are patches inside of these branches where there is a lot of discoloration. Is this juniper tip blight? No, because it's not on the tips of our stronger pieces, right? It's on older needles. It's on second year needles. The interior pieces and branches are falling off and our tips are staying intact. Big, big indication. Why would you lose older foliar mass? And let me show you this on full rotation because there are different areas that are stronger, different areas that are weaker, lower branches are weaker, right? Makes a lot of sense. Why would we be losing old needle mass in the spring, right? Tree has stored energy. Tree had this foliar mass on over the fall to store that energy. Tree uses this old foliar mass to continue photosynthesizing as the stored sugars and starches are invested in new growth at the tip. But if the tree does not have a root system that can sustain or support the addition of new growth, or if it has a root system that is receding, it's going backwards, it can't sustain or support the current needle mass, let alone a new needle mass. We get shedding of old needles. Okay, so when we look at this tree and we start to see these older interior pieces dropping off and our tip is staying intact, right? If the tip is dying, that's a significant indication of juniper tip blight, right? But if our tips are intact and we see the interior defoliating, we see these pieces, notice this, right? Bare on the interior interior branches getting weak and dying back and we just have growth on the tip and it's continuing to drop off older and older needles, right? This is a direct discussion of the physiological decline or loss of root, okay? So over the winter, did it get too dry in the greenhouse, right? And we lost root mass then. Did it uh, have the wrong orientation in front of a windy spot where maybe the vents were pulling in? Or uh, did we let it dry out in the garden? Did we go on vacation thinking there was gonna be wind and, and something happened. Did the root system suffer a traumatic event and have a recession where cold maybe on the south side of the uh, pot or the north side of the pot, depending on the extremes, was potentially damaged? We lost a portion of our root system and now we're seeing that loss repercussion or that selection effect of the, the tree shedding its second year needles and saving last year's needles as the best photosynthetic 
option to produce new growth, right? But the loss of growth at this time is saying I don't have the root system to sustain what I've already had, okay? And there's ways to check this. Root recession, the loss of roots, comes from either death via some sort of horticultural mishap or environmental mishap. Failure to water, too much water. Too cold of temperature, too warm of temperature. Or prolonged wetness and a lack of oxygen anaerobic activity. And what enters that root death, what enters that recession of root mass that has the ability to sustain and add, now I don't even have the ability to sustain, I'm gonna drop off those second year needles at a very odd time of year to be doing so, is the water molds. This is where we get into Pythium and this is where we get into Phytophthora, okay? So, when we see this, we can very easily check by going underneath the soil surface and taking a really solid look at some smaller roots that exist, right? You need to get to a smaller root mass, you need to find a smaller root mass. Here is a small root from this tree, right? When we pull that or cut that root, just to use it as a test subject, and we remove it from the pot, what we wanna do is we wanna strip the sheath off of that root, okay? If the sheath comes off smoothly and it leaves behind this central backbone and that central backbone is white, that is a living root. There is not a water mold, there is not a, a pathogen that is existing on this root, okay? But if we strip off roots and we're able to pull that sheath off the root, and let me just see if I can get this sheath off the root. It's a little bit dry, so it might be a little bit more precarious, okay? If we're able to strip that sheath off that root and notice that that sheath, let me go in front of my hand there. Notice that that sheath is light brown. Notice that, that underneath that sheath, that central stem is brown or black. And oftentimes that central stem on a root that's infected with a water mold, Pythium or Phytophthora, will still be wet. You'll pull that sheath off central stem, black or brown, and is still wet. That already, shedding of second year needles, losing foliar mass, I should not be losing at this time of year. Tree maintaining and keeping tips. Not a foliar fungal issue on the tip of the tree. Right? This is a definitive root related issue where you're seeing it in different locations across the canopy. We find those roots, we, we pull a few test subjects for those roots, we separate the sheath from the central core. White, it's alive, black or brown and water soaked. It is dead and it is dead because we have the impact of a water mold, Phytophthora or Pythium, okay? Now, common treatment for this, right? I have a tree that's shedding, it does have health. The, the tips look good, it's a tree that's recovering. I would expect a little bit of atrophy. I know the root system has had some success and failure over the past year, obviously tilting up, right? Tilting up to increase the movement of water out of the container. We water it, we soak it, there's health in this tree, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't need to be kept bone dry. It needs water to excel and survive, right? But once I water, thorough saturation, boom, I'm tipping up. Now I have a weaker branch on this side, I'm probably gonna tip up here. It makes a lot of sense to be elevating this weakest branch towards the sun, okay? And I'm gonna exchange that water. Now am I, am I gonna leave it tipped up? No, I'll water it, I'll thoroughly soak it, soak it, tip it up, let that water drain and set it back down, okay? This is the dance of a tree that has had some root recession that we've now identified with the loss of second year needles and a healthy tip we go to the root cross sections, we see some live, we see some dead. Live means we can recover, dead means we had some sort of attrition, okay? Just the change of oxygen getting into the root system faster and excess water leaving quicker with that angle shift can be all that it takes to rectify a Pythium or a Phytophthora invasion in the roots. But if we see the tree losing further ground, continuing the recession out to the tips. It's not stabilizing after the change of angle over two weeks. It's not getting better, in fact, it's getting worse. This is where we lean on a drench, right? A drench of an Aliette, a drench of a Subdue Max. These are two products, right? When we talk about Aliette, Aliette typically a Pythium treatment. When we talk about Subdue Max, typically a Phytophthora treatment, okay? And when we're looking at that, if we wanna verify what pathogen we're dealing with, we send it to an extension lab, right? Oregon State University Pathology Lab, Google it on the internet, they have the form, they have the fee, you send in the sample, they will tell you if you have Phytophthora or Pythium. But generally, cultural changes, right? The, the, the increased rate at which water is pulled out of the system, right? And oxygen re-enters the system is all that it really takes 
to be able to rectify root-related issues. And this is that slow burn. We all want to have a very massive impact. I wanna change it. I wanna fix it. I wanna fix my bonsai tree. The roots are dying. The foyer mass is falling off. This is going in the wrong direction. Oh my gosh, okay. okay, be careful with chemicals. Be careful with chemicals. If you can lean on the horticultural practice of changing the way that you are watering and maintaining and managing that tree, you will have a far greater success over the long run in terms of rectifying issues on your tree, okay? But sometimes we do need to lean on those. If it starts to get bad enough, we can't help the tree recover, all right? And that's it, that's it. The logic of knowing, listen, it's a pine, it's a juniper, it's a spruce, it's a hemlock, it's a fir, uh, it, it, it's, it's any of our coniferous species losing needle mass in the spring season as spring growth is beginning, we have a reduction of the root mass. We cannot sustain what we currently have and we've got to fix that invasion of a water mold and the loss or recession of our root mass. You have the factors, you have the indicators, now you have the tools. Beware of the spring season, watch closely for this as another one of those things that allows you to identify and respond positively to give your tree the best chance at ultimate health. Horticulture is always the backbone of our process and approach. Better exchange of water and oxygen, that tree will compartmentalize that root rot, it will send out new roots at that site of compartmentalization, and you will move forward with success. All right, good luck. Enjoy the rest of your spring. Tuck this one into your quiver as another skill set and piece of knowledge you have to rectify those health issues. We'll see you guys, if not tomorrow, on the live Q&A next Tuesday for the live stream. Love you. Have a great rest of your week. Enjoy spring. It's upon us. Mwah! Welcome to the Bonsai Mirai YouTube channel where we educate you on how to do bonsai better and inspire you through creative projects that expand your awareness of the art form. Click subscribe to be the first to know when new videos are added to the channel.